it's just something that um, I would say joy is something that never leaves. It it just never goes away. Joy just gives you that peace. Joy just stays, you know, for the word says that, you know, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. So I could be happy right now for five minutes, you know what I mean? And then somebody could call me and give me some news or anything could happen. And then it changes my mood, which is I'm not happy anymore. But that joy that, you know, God gives that sustains me, that keeps me going even through trials, through tribulations, no matter what's going on, because God, you know, resides in me and I, you know, serve, you know, a God that is just almighty, a God that is joy, that is peace, that is love, that is everlasting. I'm going to always have that joy. Like, it's not going to go anywhere. Like, I could give an example for today. I had a, a, you know, a rough morning starting off, but um, I could have let it dictate, you know, my day. But I was just at home sitting on my bed and um, the peace of God was just still there with me. And I had turned on my television, but then I ended up turning it off and I had my Bible sitting in front of me. And then I read a couple of scriptures in King and um, even while I was reading the scriptures, like it was just uh, a joy that I had inside of me and just tears were, you know, came in my eyes and it wasn't tears of sadness. It wasn't even about what happened today or this morning. It was just like, God, I just thank you that even in spite of whatever the enemy tries to set forth or put ahead of me, like, God, I just still thank you. Like, I just still love you because you just love me and you just, you just keep me and just, you know, just your peace and your love. And I'm just, just, you know, I have the joy to know that I can serve you in spite of like, no one can dictate my day because I know you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And that was just the joy that I will continue to keep and carry with me knowing that I serve him and that, you know, God is with me in spite of. So, you know, joy is just always going to be there. Happiness, like I said, it can just, you know, it's it's up and down but just you know like the bible says the joy that you know this joy that i have the world and give the work can't you know take it away so um you know that that's that's my that's my take on it hallelujah hallelujah you said it baby you said it so why do we go out and pursue happiness because people, you never, you you rarely ever people say like, I just want joy. Most people are pursuing happiness. They're like, I just want to be happy. They get divorced and file for divorce because you just don't make me happy. I'm not happy anymore. They go and leave their job because they're like, I'm not happy here, right? Like we always are pursuing happiness. But when we think about it, give me one scripture that tells us to go be happy. Let's find one scripture that talks about happiness, y'all. Pull it up. Pull it up right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pull it up. <laughs> Alay a lay top of some calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Not to calm down, though. <laughs> Hilarious. Yes, but think about it, y'all. Like for real, when we really think about the what we see and how we live, and even you know, we just think about it. Everybody wants to be happy, but the scripture never tells us to be happy because how a nation just broke it down. Happiness is dependent upon is is conditional upon external factors. I'm gonna just read this quick definition for y'all. It says happiness and joy are two different emotions that are often confused. Happiness is a state of well-being and contentment that depends on external factors such as materialistic or worldly pleasure, success, or good fortune. Joy is an emotion that is evoked by the prospect or possession of what one desires and is expressed or exhibited regardless of external circumstances. Joy is about inner self and soul satisfaction, 
while happiness is about outside things. So when we think about it from that aspect and why would, and you said it in Asia, you, you really broke it down the best way that it could be broken down. And so the way in Asia described it is joy comes from deep down in the soul. Joy is from in the soul, but about, can somebody just say, so why would joy come from deep down in the soul and happiness does not like, why, what's the difference? Does, can anybody explain that? Y'all got it. Come on. Come on. Y'all got it. Chris and Asia, y'all got it. I looked up um, John mm -hmm. uh, 15 and 11. Um, well, starting at 10, um, it says, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. But verse 11 says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you mm -hmm. and that your joy may be complete. Mm -hmm. Mm, mm, mm. okay wait a minute so there's a correlate okay because let's talk about it because if you don't have okay so if what you just read it sounds to me like there's a correlation between your joy and keeping his commands am i am i hearing that correctly correct correct okay correct. okay okay so will we meet somebody who calls themselves a christian but they feel like they don't have joy it's probably because they are not keeping the commands because there's a joy in being obedient to God. There's a joy in following him. Because remember, he said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. So if you are his and you know his voice, you're going to naturally obey him. He said, if you love me, you obey my commands. So to me, if you are not, if you're missing the joy, that could be the reason why you're missing the joy. Okay. It's because of that. That was a perfect one. Anybody else got one? Um, down here, it says, but joy supernaturally sustains our souls in seasons of heartache, injustice, and sorrow. And during the valleys of life is nearly impossible without the life-giving fuel of joy in Christ. So one of the things that I had realized too, is we talk a lot about, when we talk about the characteristics of God, you know, we talk about his holiness because we know how holy he is. We talk about the righteousness of God because he's perfect and blameless without sin. We talk about how how God is a judge, how he's going to come, you know, and judge and the judge the world. We, we know his, his judgment, right? We talk about that. We don't have a problem on this line talking about God as judge, fire and brimstone. We don't have a problem with that. We talk about God as in, in, of love. We know God is love and we hear that a lot. God is love. So anywhere where there is love, it comes from God because he is love. So there, you can never have love and not and not and not come from God. I'm talking about true godly love, right? Because you know, there's a, a a perverted love, right? That Satan has perverted, like lust and all that stuff or whatever. But we're talking about that perfect love, that love that is um is perfect, you know, that love that's long suffering and that love that uh doesn't keep record and that love that's patient and kind and all that stuff. Love comes from God, right? Because he is love. So we talk about those characteristics of God, but we never really talk about the joy of God, like God is joy because there's a scripture that says, um, it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. The wait, let me just say it again. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So that means that the joy that you have, the strength that you have, the joy that you have is the Lord's. Like it came from the Lord. It came from him. So it's his joy that's imputed into you. That's why one of the fruits of the spirit is joy, right? We know that the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We know that those are the fruits of the spirit. So if you're abiding in Christ, if he abides in you and you abide in him, those are the fruit that you would be bearing. So you would be bearing the fruit of joy. So these are his nature. These are his characters. These are his natures. And that's how you can bear them because he abides in you. You. So if he didn't abide in you, you wouldn't be able to bear the love and the peace and the kindness and all that stuff. But joy is also one of those. So joy is his. He is joyous. He is joyful. And I don't think that we think of God in that light necessarily as being joyful.
So the joy of the Lord is your strength. So because he's joyful, you are joyful and can be joyful. All right, what y'all got? Um, I got that um, in the Old Testament, the, um, the, Is the Israelis, they rejoiced and they sung songs of joy when they escaped from the Egyptians and made their way to the promised land. Hallelujah. 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 And then let's look at it too from what Chris was saying, because she was talking about joy and hope run hand in hand. Let's look at that real quick too, because it says in um it says Hebrews, I think this is the one, Hebrews 6, 19, 20. It says, We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. Wait, listen to this, y'all. We have a have this a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf. I think I need to pull it up in my, um, in my, what you call it, hold on. Because uh, and then you have Peter, First um, Peter 1, 8 through 9. I got I can't see it on this screen here. Hold on, y'all. I can't see it. Okay, yeah. Okay, whom, whom having not seen, ye love in whom thou now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your, I'm sorry, even the salvation of your souls. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. Listen, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit so when we see the word joy we see the word hope which is the core the correlation that chris was talking about is that because we have hope in christ that's where our joy also comes from because we have hope in Christ. Because think about it, y'all. We go through some stuff, y'all. We go through some stuff that would really just break us down. It would shut us down, down, down. It would shut us all the way down. But um, but we, but because, but when you go through something and you can't, it's like you can't even find your way out. You don't know how you're going to get out. It just looks crazy. It looks like it's never going to happen. You get discouraged, all of that. But when you have your hope, anchored in Christ that's where your joy comes from like Chris said that joy comes in the morning each day because you can't stay in that place of disappointment you can't stay in that place of despair because my anchor is root my anchor my hope is anchored in Christ because I know he can do it I know he can pull me out I know he can change the circumstances I know he's coming I know he's going to rescue me I know he's going to deliver me I know he's the only one who can pull this off I know he's a miracle worker so because my hope is anchored in Christ Jesus I can't even stay in a place of despair I can't stay in a place of unhappiness because I'm so hopeful that I know he can Cause I don't know about y'all, y'all, but I be going through some stuff in my household, in my marriage. It be looking, it don't be looking good. It don't be looking good, y'all. But I be like, God, you can do it. You can do it. And because he can do it, there's a joy that just lives on the inside of me. And I say, God, how do I even make it through this? How do I even push through? How do I even keep going? Because I know that for, I know that everybody that I know would have walked up out of here, God, people would have quit. People would have gave up, but I 
I, I hold on because I know that you can. I know that you're capable. I know that all things are possible. Even when it looks impossible, because that's what you said. So because of my hope, my anchor of hope rooted in Christ, I have this joy that just keeps me through. So like Chris said, I don't feel happy every day. I don't feel happy. Sometimes I don't feel happy with my husband. I don't feel happy with my kids. I don't feel happy every day when I wake up, but I have this unspeakable joy, this peace down on the inside of me. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. And it keeps me pressing. It keeps me going. It gives me hope to know that it's going to change. It's going to look better that our deliverance is coming. So when I say yes, there's a difference between because this joy, because remember Christ, he comes and purifies and redeems and touches the soul, the realm of the soul. But happiness is conditional. Happiness is on the outside. If I was, if I was to go by my happiness, we would do what the world does. We would just go get a new, go get divorced, go find a new husband. If we would just, you know what I'm saying? But because we're rooted in joy and not happiness. We, we wait on Christ in our circumstances, no matter what it looks like and no matter how it feels, we trust Christ and we trust and we stand on the word. What scriptures y'all got? What y'all got for joy? I also... Um... Just to coincide with what you and Chris said about, um, you know, facing trials and you just going through and then, you know, Chris talking about hope. And we also know that hope is um, hope. I look at hope and then I look at faith because faith is the evidence of things hope. I mean, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So then when you look at James uh, 1, 2, Verse two and three, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sis. That's a good one. That's a good one. Because he even correlates the joy with our tribulations, with our trials. It's, you know, that, that there's a joy and a hope in our tribulation, because as it begins to, as these tribulations push us through the fire, as we go through these deep waters, our anchor again is in Christ. Our faith is in Christ and it purifies us. And we come out on the other side, tried by the fire, but still standing pressed for beyond measure on each side, but still we come out purified on the other side. So even in that, the joy the tribulation produces joy. Amen. Amen. I just pulled one up and this is a good one. Um, this is like a summary. So just putting it all together. Um, it's a perpetual gladness of the heart that comes from knowing, experiencing, and trusting Jesus. So I thought that that was really good. Just wanted to share. Hallelujah. The joy from just knowing him. Woo. That's good. Yeah, that was good. That was good. And then it says on John 16, 24, it says, until now you have asked nothing in my name, ask and you will receive it, that your joy may be full. Proverbs 17, 22, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Uh, Psalms 47 and 1, clap your hands, all you nations, shout to God with cries of joy. 
in Proverbs 10, 28, the prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. So we never see, when we think about it, we never see the scriptures talk about happiness. It always talks about joy and joy is deep down in the soul. Like, you know, that, that old song we used to sing, um, I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where down in my heart, I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart Tuesday. I know y'all know that song, but yes, I used to sing that in the kids choir, y'all, but yes. <laughs> I got two more. That was good too. That is true. I love that song. Um, this is, um, um, Psalms 21, six for you may make, for you make him a source of blessings forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. And then I have one more, your words were found and I ate them and your words became a joy. Now listen to that. Your words were found. Oh my God. Whew. And I ate them. And your words became a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, Lord of hosts. Jeremiah 15, 16. Wow. Amazing. Yes, that's good. Wait, I need you to read that first one again too, Chris. That was good right there. That is so good because you know it's true. You got excited when you read it, Chris, because it resonated with you because you know the moment you got into this word and started eating it up that he, because he is the daily bread, it really does, it, it changes you and it fills you with such a joy. So I know that resonated because this is good, good, good food. Yes it is so which one the first one that i read yes the first one please read that again for you make him a source of blessing blessings forever you make him glad with the joy of your presence hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. that's psalm 21 6 yes but the the second it's the second one for me Jeremiah fifteen sixteen because your words were found and I ate them so I picked up the Bible and I started reading the Bible for myself and I started eating that word and your words became a joy and the delight of my heart because every time I think about the goodness and the mercifulness and the grace that the Lord gives us daily um it makes me joyful literally it makes it make like I could cry right now because it's so good like his love is unmatched and then you know just spending more time with him and getting to know him better and all of those things that really 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 does make a difference in your day in your life you know in situations you still can look to have joy even though you might be down or even though you might be disappointed or even if it's not working out the way you want it to, you know, we still could be joyful, thankful, you know? So yes, it's good. I think also like how we're going through this, we're giving or compiling the recipe for joy. Um, each scripture points out a different piece of the recipe, um, which has been hope, faith, trust, prayer, and reading the word. And when we put those things together, that's how um, we're able to create joy for ourselves that'll withstand everything amen hold on hold on alaya got one hold on hebrews 12 2 we do this by keeping our eyes on jesus the champion who imitates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him, 
he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. It's so it's because of the joy that awaited him that he went to the cross. And I think that that's powerful too, because again, the father, remember it pleased him. He was well pleased, you know, that sweet smell and savor, you know, Christ going in, in obedience and laying down his life that pleased the father. And so there's a joy that the father has in the, uh, the finished works of the cross, the, 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 uh, the obedience of his son, you know, this, this brings the father great joy. You know, it even says that even when, you know, the scripture, somebody might know the number or, or be able to quote it better than I can, but you know, it even talks about how the heaven rejoices when, um, when a one, one sinner or comes to repentance. So there's a joy. So I, again, we don't usually think of the father being joyful, right? But he is, he's very joyful. And so, um, like Sister Sean was saying, I love the way you said that, Sister Sean. Like, this is the recipe for joy. But everybody's out looking, trying to pursue happiness. But really, we should be really looking for joy because joy lasts always. Joy is eternal because God's joy can never go away because He's eternal, right? But happiness is just so conditional. But the world has taught us to look for happiness and we wonder why we're not consistently happy. But joy is when, man, you be going through some stuff and you and you sit, you be like, God, how am I OK in this? And we know it's Christ, but sometimes maybe we just don't know how to put it into perspective. It's because he's joyful so I can be joyful that I can have this peace. Even in this turmoil, even in this rocky situation. Oh, uh, Sister Erica put, oh, Luke 15, 10. Luke 15, 10. Does anybody have a scripture on the joy of, of, of God, like God's joy, a scripture that shows his joy? Uh, Luke 15, 10. I'm going to pull up Luke 15, 10 while y'all looking at that. Luke 15, 10. Luke 15, 10. Thank you, Sister Erica. Um, yeah, okay, it's in the parable of the lost son. That's right. And um, it's uh, Luke 15, 10. Oh, no, it's right before that. It's right before that. The, in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Erica. What y'all got? Did anybody ever really think of God as joyous before? Like, you know, because again, we talk about so many different parts of his character and his nature, but how could the, how could joy be a fruit of the spirit if it wasn't already his, if it wasn't already who he is? No, I think that we know the joy is a part of it, but I also think that if that's one of the things that we probably dumb down. You know, especially because, like you said, we've been programmed and conditioned to talk about happiness, you know, but um, when we were t the other night, it really hit home for me, you know, it really did, it really clicked, so, yeah. Hallelujah. Romans 14, 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Hey, um, Lynn, did you have anything to add to the happiness and joy? No, no. 
I was just wondering what you thought, because I know, um, I don't know, that's just how we're looking at it too. Like, you know, the world has really, we talk about happiness, but now, mm-hmm. do you think, do, do you think there's a difference? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I mean, I, I, I really, no, I, I, I don't know. I shouldn't say that because I'm, I really haven't, hadn't really thought about it that, like that, you know? Right, right. I understand. Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I do think that there are, you know, I mean, like I just with some of the scriptures and some of the scriptures that I've, you know, heard, you know, that, you know, it is better to have joy. And like you said, happiness is kind of like maybe a, a one day thing or a fleeting thing. Because, you know, when you say, like, unspeakable joy, that's mm-hmm. that's truly what it is. Yeah. It's unspeakable. It's, 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 it's solidified. It's solid. It's stored up. Like, it's stored, you know? Happiness is not stored. Happiness is very much so conditional, depending on the circumstances and outcomes and so forth and so on. You can be happy in the morning, but joy lasts forever, you know? Praise the mm-hmm. Lord for that. Yes, because that scripture says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes, and Lord knows I done went to bed weeping many nights, but the next day I can't even be mad no more. I can't even be mad, even if I wanted to be mad. Y'all ever try it? Like, mm -mm, I'm about to be mad. I'm about to be mad at this one. I ain't giving this one up because I'm mad. I feel some type of way. And you go to bed, but when you wake up the next day, you really just don't even care no more. Oh, and I like this one too. It was one that I read. It just made me, it brought tears to my eyes. I don't know which one it is, but I know I like this one too. It's a uh, Psalms. Is it, is it this one? Yeah, I think it's Psalms 65 and eight. It says, and they who dwell in the ends of the earth stand in all of thy signs. Thou, do, thou dost make the dawn and the sunset shout for joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks and the valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. So it was so what and that's Psalm 65, 13. And so that's so beautiful to me because it's letting us know that, you know, how God has created creation. And remember, he said, and it is good. And even in creation is clothed in his glory, right? In his splendor, because he created it. In, And who could be so wise to create such a thing, such a creation? And so even in that, it's saying that even as creation is clothed in his glory, it's singing. It says the meadows are clothed with flocks and the valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. So the valleys and the meadows are just singing. You know what I mean? Because they're joyful just to be his creation. You know what I mean? It's just beautiful. How could he create something joyous, but yet him himself not be joy? Because all things are for him and back to him. You know what I mean? Does that make sense, y'all, what I'm trying to say? I just think that's beautiful. No, that's really beautiful because, again, he created all things. And the things that he created, because he's joy, 
it gave them joy and then they returned the joy back. Man, that's that's beautiful for real. Because even in Psalms 96, 12, it says, let the field exalt and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. That's beautiful. That I think that would be why people go out to be in nature. They go out and they pick a flower and it brings people joy just to see the flower because of the beauty and the splendor of the flower. It sets a joy in their in their soul. You know what I mean? Because it's clothed in joy. Like, oh my goodness, let me stop. Man, that is so true. That is so true because I could go and to the waterfront and I can sit at the waterfront. I could watch the water. I will watch birds. The other day I pulled up there. I was sitting in front of the water and it was a baby raccoon that was across the street from me. And I just sat and watched the raccoon. I personally have always loved animals. So just watching animals, it gives me joy, honestly, because I know that the creator of all things created this. So it is, it's joyful. So you even get joy just knowing that he did this. You know, every time I think about the circle of life and some of the insects and things like that, uh, of how everything is designed, it's, it's joyful because it's so mind blowing. You know, that everything is so strategic. So, yeah, praise the Lord for this joy talk. I, I agree with that. Like, that's why I moved a thousand miles away from home and family and everything because. I just get a certain level of peace um, when I'm around water, when I'm outside. And I noticed that like extracting from me when I would have to like go through winters in Pittsburgh and it was just hard. Like I was, I was definitely affected a lot by like the weather and the sunshine and, but um being able to just like go outside 365 days a year is like that's it just is indescribable it's it's just another level um of joy and happiness that it brings me to be able to just enjoy God's creation and um be able to just walk up to the ocean and just sit there for hours you know whenever you're feeling unsettled or it's, it's wonderful. So I agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all we serve a joyous father, a good, good father. Cause remember he says he doesn't delight in the judgment of the wicked he doesn't delight in those things it's not his will that any man should perish but have everlasting life so sometimes we think about you know his judgment and all that stuff and people think oh he's you know he could be such a mean mean god now we know he's just and he's righteous in his judgment but he delights in us being obedient and um and serving him and worshiping him like he delights in those things and so we just thank him that we serve a god who is love who is good but who is also joy who is the prince of peace that we can also have these things so i just thank him i'm happy y'all and i thank him for this joy because i really do i ask him some days i know the answer but i be like god how am i doing this how am i making it but it's because the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I thank him that he is joy, if that makes sense, y'all. Like Sister Erica be saying, like, you know, she be talking about grace, and but he is grace. Like he is grace. There's no grace outside of Christ. He is the definition of grace. He is the source of grace, but he's also that same source of joy.
He's unlimited in all things. Isn't that something? That I that our small minds can comprehend. So unlimited love, unlimited joy, unlimited peace, kindness, and all of his characteristics. So that is just beautiful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for this joy, Lord God, this unspeakable joy. That's what that's what Peter calls it. Peter calls it unspeakable joy. And it really is. It's unspeakable. Like you can't even describe it sometimes. It's indescribable joy. Mm. All right, what y'all got before we get off this line? Anasia, Sean, y'all got anything else? Chris, y'all got anything else? Erica, y'all got anything else? Mm. Dang, where's Sister Serena at? And she would have loved it. <laughs> oh, right, right. I know, right? I know. I know. Yes. Could I ask, um, did everyone see, like, I, I don't know if you watch the news, but the day they um, overturned um, affirmative action. And I was watching the news that day and there was like a, a, a guy, he was, was a young young person and he was on there he was talking about um you know he why he was glad that affirmative action was overturned and he you know they were some of the people that had actually um you know fought were fighting that in court but one of the things that really struck me about that was that he talked about how you know Black people, basically, and I mean, he like, but he really said, you know, he he made it all about us, you know, and he talked about how black people were, um, how we shouldn't get into schools because, you know, they lowered the standards, and also um, he was saying that. You know, it's always been known that in their culture, they study real hard. They do all these other things to get high scores. And, you know, it, they shouldn't be left out, you know, and we, you know, we shouldn't be able to get in. But I, I thought that was pretty presumptuous of him to think that, you know, it was only Black people who were benefiting from that. You know, because we're not the only ones who benefit from that. And to say that nationally, did anyone hear that? No, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it or see it. Did y'all see it? I didn't hear that exact report that, um, but I, I think that I did hear that um, I have been following the affirmative action. And I think it, right now it's just affecting the college, um, the college admissions, mm -hmm. but you know, you're exactly right. We're not the only people who are benefiting from affirmative action affirmative action is to is at a benefit for every single minority including you know women um which includes white women mainly right. who are benefiting right. mostly from affirmative action um you know asians latinos every single race 
gets to benefit from affirmative action. And I think that it's when they do talk about that, they never seem to bring up the lopsided yeah. thing that like we have to experience as far as how they have um, a lot of schools have that grandfather clause. So part of the grandfather clause is like, like my son, he wants to go to Harvard, you know, um, mm -hmm. that's his aspiring goals. And Harvard is one of the schools that has a gr grandfather clause. So the way that school college boards work right now is that you get points, right? Mm -hmm. So you get so many points for your SATs, you get so many points for your grades. Right. And then they're also giving out points, extra points basically you almost get a shoe in if you had a, a relative that that's was, the legacy program yeah the legacy that's what it's called the legacy um into you know previously to that school we are one of the minorities that don't necessarily get to um to get to uh benefit from the legacy program because we weren't allowed in these schools you know, mm -hmm. like we didn't have that opportunity to be able to um, enroll in those schools that are the ones that are now like, okay, yeah, you you have a you don't have affirmative action, and that's where affirmative action comes into play because they were blocking us out, and they're gonna, you know, if they have the chance, they're going to continue to block us out, you know. So if you don't have these certain laws and regulations in place to help benefit minorities because as we know this world is not fair it's not set up mm -hmm. fair it's set up for us to lose at all costs mm -hmm. you know that's why all of our black men are you know in jail for some for life for just selling drugs that are now considered legal right you know? so right. it's just it's just disgusting it's disgusting all the way around um I'm not, I'm not happy with any of it, but no. you know, we have faith. In well, the I, I, I think that in the end, though, you know, it's going to affect them because um, when you look at that, when you look at schools like Harvard and Stanford and all of those places like that, they said 53% of the people that are in there are on the legacy program. They're, they're there because of the legacy program. They had exactly. some relatives that went there. And they said, so that makes it like 53% white, you know, in most cases. And um, then they said that um, Asians make up 25% of those students in the, you know, Harvard and Stanford and things like that. And then all the other minorities are just smaller pockets of, you know, that make up the rest of the percentage to a hundred. Cause I think women were next. And then I think black people were like 10% or something. But I, I just thought that that was, you know, really, um, I, I didn't, I couldn't even see how he could, you know, get on national television. And basically he was saying like, you know, we're stupid. And everybody who goes to Harvard, that's, you know, a minority and especially a black person, you know, they worked hard to get there. It wasn't about just affirmative action. Cause they're just not, you know, that is, is, if that was the case, there would be a lot of different people in, in Harvard, but you know, that's most of the kids that go to Harvard, there's something about them. That's the cream of the crop. And I just thought that was a really ugly thing to say, you know, about another minority on TV.
All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know about that. I didn't know. I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. I mean, he's been on TV a lot because I mean, he w I didn't just see him on that one channel. You know, this was he was on CBS that day. You know, and then I've seen him like when I turned to other ones, they had him as a guest on other shows too. But I'm, you know, I really feel like God will turn that around too. All right, y'all. Um, anybody got anything else? I know Nadine, you just, uh, were, did you have anything before we get off the line, Nadine? Oh, I missed it. Oh, I tried my best. It's storming. Is it storming over there, Quinn? Yes, girl, this day gone, uh, my power go out every time. Mine's been over here flickering. And um, I just went to go get my lights because I already know what time it is. <laughs> oh, well, well, let me tell you how it is in Turtle Creek. Mm. The storm will be over and then our lights will go out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it won't even be windy. I'll be like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Good. No, I miss you, ladies. I'm sorry. I'm coming back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm sitting on the back porch in the storm, though, because I love rain. Like, I love it. But see, you got a screened in porch, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I want one of those. You can come over anytime and sit on my porch <laughs> with me in the rain. Yes, I love that. That is so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, I hear my grandma say, get off that phone in my head. She's like, get off yeah. that phone. You know, make you turn off everything, lay on the floor. That's how I do No, but I didn't have anything. I love you, ladies. <laughs> yeah. I love you too, but you definitely need to go back and um and listen to the video because you know what? You just proved a whole nother point that we already talked about. And that's nature going outside, watching the uh, rain. That's that's joyful. <laughs> it's like the most peace and calm you'll ever get. I swear to goodness, I love it. I love it. I'm not stupid now. I won't be out here if it was for real thundering and lightning, but it's just windy and rainy, a little bit of thunder, you know. Yeah, I don't test God, but you know. <laughs> yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, y'all. So I'm going to be, uh, let me turn this recording off real quick. Hold on, y'all, hold on. I'm so slow because I'm on my phone, so I don't know how to do it. Hold on. <laughs> 